Uh, I will uh, leave it to the Treasurer, Joe Hockey, to deliver the budget uh, tomorrow night. However, uh, what we uh, have uh, focused on uh, in this budget uh, is uh, making sure that our world-class uh, hospital system, our world-class healthcare system continues to be sustainable into the future, continues to provide affordable access uh, to high-quality healthcare for patients and continues uh, to be affordable uh, for taxpayers. Uh, so so there you're is... not ruling out a co-payment for casualty ward visits? Well, I leave it uh, to the Treasurer, Joe Hockey, to provide the detail uh, in the budget tomorrow night. But just to say again, our focus very much uh, has been on building an even stronger health system to make sure that the world-class health system uh, that we uh, expect here in Australia, uh, continues to be affordable and sustainable uh, into the future for our children and grandchildren. But if there is a co-payment to visit a bulk billing GP, won't there have to be a matching charge for emergency de departments to stop those casualty wards getting clogged up? Well, you can rest assured that whatever changes uh, we have made in the budget, we thought uh, through uh, their implications very carefully, uh, and whatever uh, secondary uh, consequences that needed to be managed uh, will be uh, very carefully managed. And and who would decide who would pay that co-payment in an emergency department? Would it be doctors and nurses? Well, uh, we're getting way ahead of ourselves now. Uh, I let uh, the Treasurer, Joe Hockey, deliver the budget tomorrow and we'll be able to have these sorts of conversations uh, for the next few weeks and months. Minister, the, the budget will include the abolition or merger of up to 70 government agencies. We know that. How small do you actually want government to be in this country? Well, government has become uh, way too big and way too wasteful uh, under the previous uh, government. When we came into government, uh, we were told uh, by finance that there were nearly 1,000 uh, different individual government uh, bodies. There was a lot of waste, a lot of duplication. Uh, our focus uh, has been on making sure that government services and government administration uh, is as efficient, uh, as effective uh, and as accountable as possible. And the taxpayers aren't asked to pay uh, for things that they shouldn't be asked to pay for. So yes, there will be a significant effort in this budget uh, as a second phase in our uh, effort to reduce the size of government, which will be followed uh, by further uh, efforts uh, down the track. Uh, and really, the purpose is uh, to make sure uh, that government administration uh, is as efficient and as cost effective as possible. So how many more agencies could be abolished or merged down the track in your third phase of uh, rationalisation? Well, we're working through these things very carefully and methodically and it's not we're, we're not giving ourselves a blanket rule in terms of a number, but what we're looking at very carefully are the functions that are being performed, how they compare with functions being performed by other agencies uh, and where it makes sense uh, to uh, merge uh, various uh, bodies into one or where it makes sense uh, to uh, ask the private sector to perform certain functions currently uh, supplied by the, by the government sector, uh, then we will make those decisions uh, in an orderly fashion. Now, some of the agencies to be abolished outright include Labor's Australian Renewable Energy Agency, also the National Water Commission. Is this just about saving money or are these cuts in some part ideologically driven? Uh, not at all. This is about making sure that government uh, is as uh, efficient and as as effective uh, as possible. There is a lot of overlap between existing departments of government, uh, whether it be the Department of the Environment when it comes to renewable energy, or indeed uh, the Department of Industry, which has uh, certain responsibility in this er responsibilities in this area as well. Uh, th there have been too many agencies responsible for the same uh, area of government. This uh, leads to blurred lines of uh, accountability. It leads to uncoordinated action and we think that by doing what we're proposing to do uh, that we can make uh, government decision making and government service delivery more effective. And it must also lead to job losses. How many public servants will lose their jobs in this budget? Will it be around the 16,000 mark? Well, um, we do think that we can uh, provide the services of government, the frontline services of government in a way that is more efficient. With so that fewer means people, how with, many with, fewer well, people? Uh, all will be revealed in the budget, but there will be a further reduction in the size of the public service uh, over the forward estimates, uh, which uh, comes on top of uh, some of the efficiencies that were uh, imposed by the previous government in the dying days before the last election.
Matthias Cormann, on the roads package, that's another significant element of the budget. $40 billion over six years for roads, according to the Treasurer from his interview yesterday. But that's not all new money, is it? Nothing like it. Well, what people will see in the budget tomorrow uh, is a significant boost uh, to the investment uh, in uh, infrastructure. But and how, our much, focus, how much well, is new money? You, you'll, you'll have to wait for the detail in the budget, but it'll be a significant boost uh, to the infrastructure investment, and it'll be a focus on productivity-enhancing infrastructure as part of our uh, eco economic action strategy to build a stronger, more prosperous economy and create more jobs. But the important thing in the way that we have uh, structured our infrastructure investment is that it will leverage significant additional investment uh, from the states and territories and indeed from the private sector. So the actual investment in infrastructure across Australia will be much more significant. The, the coalition did promise before the election that you would fund West Connex in Sydney, the East West Link in Melbourne, the Toowoomba Range Crossing in Queensland. There might also be some roadworks around Badgerys Creek, but apart from those major roads, can you name one single new road the coalition will be funding with new money? Money over the next six years? Well, the ones that you've just mentioned are very significant investments uh, that we uh, committed to in the lead up to the last election. And indeed, in relation to significant uh, road infrastructure investments across Australia, we have uh, accelerated or uh, increased uh, the level of funding available to those projects in order to ensure that they are delivered more quickly than they would have been under Labor. But in the budget, uh, you will see uh, some significant. Uh, additional investments uh, in uh, all states across Australia that will significantly lift our productivity and, and our economic growth into the future. And will that money come from withdrawing funding from urban rail projects? Well, you will have to will see... Will you be shuffling the money well, that way? You, you will have to see where the money uh, comes from. But uh, one thing that I might just point to, because we've uh, made this uh, point on the public record some time ago, uh, we are engaged uh, in a process of uh, asset recycling. We've already announced that we will proceed with the sale of Medibank Private and we've said that we would reinvest the proceeds from that sale uh, into uh, productivity enhancing infrastructure. So, so some is, of that money could so, go to roads? So, so, well, that is what we've said we would do. Um, and, uh, you know, what is, what is emerging, uh, of course, we will continue to go down this path of looking for opportunities uh, to recycle uh, existing, the proceeds uh, from the sale of existing assets to reinvest them into new assets, which will help us build a stronger, more prosperous economy for the future. And